When I first matched at Cedars, I honestly remember it was like a dream come true. Honestly, I was shocked, super excited. I think the reputation of Cedars in terms of its excellence in heart surgery speaks for itself in terms of the complex cases that we do, the incredible outcomes that we're able to get for our patients. So all of that being said, Cedars just felt like the perfect fit for me. The operative experience has been awesome. My first day, they sent me on a procurement and it was me and one of the transplant fellows and right away he said, hey, have you ever opened before? Well, let's, let's, let's get you going now. I'm uh, doing stenotomies, uh, cannulating for bypass. I'm doing uh, distals, proximals, and I've been doing also some aortic valve replacement or ascending aorta. The attendings are also excited to have you doing vital portions of the cases from such a young training level. I mean, I never thought that I'd be opening, centrally cannulating, doing parts of the Lima to LAD anastomosis just a year out from medical school. And they really provide real-time feedback with every step, and you see yourself grow right in front of your eyes. Everybody advances at a different time, and you gotta find exactly how each person ticks and like what, what is that scenario that's gonna work best for them and how they learn. You spend a lot of time with the procurement teams when you're an intern, and right away you get to do sternotomies and once you progress beyond that you know you start to get small components of each case that would be fit to you and your in your skill level We're constantly thinking about what are you, what are you ready for what is this person ready for what have they done previously what's their experience like and and we want to push you so that you're um, at the edge of where you're learning is so that you may be a little uncomfortable about some things but that it's always safe that you're always supported um, and I think that that's that kind of zone where people learn the best. We have the world's largest structural heart program, the greatest transplant program, over a thousand transplants in the last 10 years, over 3,500 structural heart procedures in the last 10 years, um, over a thousand robotic mitral surgery repairs. On the thoracic surgery service, you do about 1,300 cases a year. 300 of those are major robotic anatomic resections. A third of those are VATS, which includes lung procedures as well as benign and malignant foregut. So you really get an immense experience in terms of learning everything that is for thoracic surgery. Uh, we also have a really unique program where we do ion navigational bronchoscopies and biopsies. Uh, we're at the forefront of this and have done probably the most in the country. It's a unique opportunity for residents to learn how to do these procedures and then to be able to take this cutting edge technology to wherever they choose. We have world-class surgeons who have expertise with every tech Technique. And we have innovators who are pushing the field, coming up with ways to make surgical procedures less invasive. We are a quaternary center, so we get a lot of tough cases about sick individuals, which are, are great educational opportunities for the residents because you get to see a lot of complex pathologies that you don't see other places. We work very closely with the cardiac surgery attendings to make sure that we're optimizing the resident's experience so that when they complete their training, they should be comfortable to be a fully trained cardiac surgeon as well as a thoracic surgeon. My ICU experience was uh, really great. We have a 24 ICU bed dedicated to the cardiac surgery, uh, 12 pediatric cardiac surgery, and uh, 12 CCU beds. Managing the patient is primary role by the resident under supervision of the staff uh, whenever you need. They are available 24-7. The incorporation of frequent multidisciplinary rounds is something we do which is so unique and helpful to our learning. The CISIC rounds takes place twice a week. It's an opportunity for us to come together with attendings and review all the patients in the ICU. Uh, they're presentation, their intraoperative decision making, their postoperative management. Usually the attendings pick a topic as a, as a sort of a teaching point and uh, either imaging or like technical aspects of the operation. The attending involvement and the true sort of dedication with teaching. Surgeons, intensivists, uh, cardiologists and pulmonologists as well, uh, all discussing the cases together with you and amongst them at sort of higher levels. It's no secret that these patients are super complex, but due to these rounds, you start learning to think about these patients from a multidisciplinary view. It's truly an opportunity to, to look into the brain of these world-renowned experts and, and figure out what was their decision-making process throughout the case, whether it be a tough case, redo case, and how they were able to approach those challenges and, and get a patient through and have a good outcome. I think it's very useful. Uh, I learn a lot during, this, during these rounds. 
the opportunities for research are endless here at Cedar sinai Personally, uh, I've been doing a lot of outcomes research with large databases as well as some institutional data regarding heart failure, transplantation, and structural heart disease. But there's also a myriad of other opportunities going on in the basic science realm. We have some of the premier translational laboratories and we have faculty that have really well-developed research programs that residents and fellows can come into. The beauty is that there's so much expertise here. We have Dr. Chikwu, who's very well-versed in database registry-based research and mitral valve disease, but Dr. Katarino, who's very well-versed in aortic surgery, Dr. Many as well, a very robust transplant program, which lends itself a lot of interesting ideas and project from that. Regardless of what you're interested in in the broad spectrum of cardiac surgery, there's opportunities to pursue research in any of those fields. And you have a, an amazing team of attendings who know how to produce very impactful research, not just quantity, but quality of research here at Cedars. The team environment has been really phenomenal here. Everyone is super welcoming, uh, the fellows included. We learn from each other and learn from each other's experiences. We really are a close-knit family here at Cedars, not just with the I6 residents, but also with the anesthesia and surgical residents as well. The trainees here are genuine individuals who set up such an inclusive environment and love taking part in fun activities. The general surgery residents from day one took us in like we were one of their own. Some of my best friends are part of the general surgery residency program. Even the chief residents, not just the people in our class, really take ownership of us and, and want us to succeed and want us to learn and want us to you know, enjoy our time here at work. In my first year, we have honestly had so many fun memories which is such an important thing to have in balancing the challenges of residency. How do you feel to be one of the most important people in Beverly Hills, saving the lives of celebrities out here, you know? Just a little bit dead, you know? <laughs> they must honestly be putting something in the water here at Cedars because just like the residents, all the attendings are so nice and so fun to be with. We enjoy joking with residents, having a good time. We have, I think, great relationships among us as attendings, and I think we try to share that with residents, and we try to enjoy our days as much as possible. I find uh, all of them very approachable and uh, enthusiastic to have us around and teach us. I feel good about asking them questions uh, in the OR, outside the OR. And you feel such a sense of comfort that they're always looking out for you. And at the end of the day, you can really talk to them about anything, not just surgery related. It's a whole lot easier if you have a, a great relationship with the people around you. It's nice to be a resident here in Los Angeles. There's just so much to do in this city. It's pretty nice to have 70 degrees in the wintertime, <laughs> sun shining down on you. Well, you know, nothing compares to Italy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, LA is great. Obviously, we have great weather, get to go to the beach. Um, beautiful hiking trails around here, which is stuff that I really enjoy, playing some basketball out here. There's tons of bike routes and biking trails. Uh, there's a bike trail up and down the beach, actually, all the way from like Venice Beach up to Santa Monica to Wolves Rogers. I went to Malibu, Santa Monica, Huntington, Orange County. I also love to go on hikes with my wife and my dog. Uh, so we have explored a bunch of like the, the hills and like even like the mountains further away we went skiing. I've been out to Big Bear and Mammoth on my weekends off, which are phenomenal ski resorts um, within driving distance. I also love to dance and LA has some great and unique dance studios. I'm also vegetarian and LA is full of delicious vegan and vegetarian restaurants. My wife and I are pretty big foodies and so we are we like to try new restaurants, and I think Los Angeles is better than New York in terms of the restaurant scene. There's amazing places to eat, to go get a drink with friends. The food's better than Italy. <laughs> no. <laughs> All of that is stuff that you can't get everywhere. Uh, and being in a beautiful venue like this, it just makes it even sweeter. If you want to enjoy becoming the best cardiothoracic academic surgeon that you can possibly be, I can't imagine anywhere else that you'd want to train more than Cedars.